coenzyme Q10 may ameliorate the use of statin drugs inducing muscle skeletal injury. Hormones, vitamin D is important to maintain what? Back extensor muscle strength, lumbar range of motion, and balance. I'd never seen that one before. If you see a patient with syringohydromyelia and Arnold Chiari syndrome, here's a paper that shows these are not contraindications to spinal manipulation as long the manipulation is performed by a skilled and well-trained physician. I wanted to give you uh, a review of some of the common drugs that you and I see daily in clinical practice so we're aware of their use. Here we take a 50-year-old female, comes into our clinic with right arm and neck pain. She has motor weakness in the triceps muscle, can't sleep at night. She is told she must have spine surgery. She has her first MR in April of this year and a repeat MR because she wanted to see if there was a change in, in the disc herniation, she had it redone in August. The arm pain, totally gone in this period of care. But here is a result of anterior head carriage. And look at this patient's x-ray. Is that indeed anterior head carriage? Well, that's an angle here of probably close to 30 degrees, giving you up to a 40-pound head putting all the stress upon the posterior longitudinal ligament, the spinal muscles, the deep multifides, and here is a big C6, C7 disc herniation contacting the spinal cord, a smaller C5, C6 disc herniation. 50-year-old 50 50 year female who doesn't want to have surgery. So let's look at the axial images. <clears throat> I offer to you, that's a very large right-sided intraforaminal disc fragment. Here, again, large disc, high intensity zone, chemical inflammatory changes of leaking nuclear material, creating chemicals such as tumor necrosis factor, calci calcitonin gene-related peptide, cytokines, interleukins, all these chemical inflammatory agents leaking through the nucleus into the canal you note the compression of the spinal cord as well. I'm going to share this with you. We've seen a possible etiology of stress, anterior head carriage. This patient's on drugs that we've just been discussing in our uh, common drug usage. And she doesn't want surgery. <clears throat> so what is her option? Well, you and I are a very strong part of that option. So pleased is she with the re relief that we give her that she goes and repeats at her expense this repeat MRI. And what you see is that large C6, C7 disc herniation is markedly reduced. Yes, there's some bulging here, but it certainly is not compressing the cord and the osseoligamentous canal that it was before. So how do we handle this case? Now, note please, we have a C5, C6, and a C6, C7 disc herniation. Where will my contact be? C5. Why? Because there is a C5, C6 disc herniation. If I contact C6, there is an opportunity of pushing the disc herniation into a nerve root. Whereas when you contact above the disc, you are lifting the nerve root off of the disc. And at the same time that I contact C5, C6, I will contact the C5, C6 arch. I will move to the taut point. This is called the barrier of elastic resistance, at which I now have tautness of the cervical spine. And now I enter the paraphysiological zone. That is, I apply my five four-second pumps. The five four-second pumps, we call this protocol one. Now, as I traction him, I feel a cavitation. Now, doctor, when you treat this, always make the contact, but do not push P to A on T1 in order to regain range of motion. I know you remember one of the papers I shared with you earlier in the research pearls. 
was that lateral flexion at the C7 level was used to increase range of motion of the cervical spine. Now, the next case is um, numerous cysts in the, in the spine. And how do we handle these types of things? Well, we handle them just the way you saw. Here they are, all through the cervical spine. These are perineural cysts. Again, in the thoracic spine, perineural cysts. And observe here, these are T, you know, here on T1 Im images, they're black. Because they are fluid, and fluid on T1 is going to be black in the perineural cyst. So she has these throughout her spine. There's T2 perineural cysts. Here they are. They're rather large in the thoracic spine, perineural cysts. However, we treat by carefully tolerance testing, and she tolerates treatment. Here at the sacrum is a very large perineural cyst called a Tarloff cyst. Here we see smaller perineural cysts throughout this woman's spine. These cysts do not seem to be a complicating factor. She's improved with what she says is stretching. She likes to be distracted. So we carefully tolerance test and we get our relief. This is the next case that you and I are beginning to see so, so much of. It's post-surgical backs. This is an 81-year-old medical doctor who had uh, cages placed in L4 and L5, has rods and pedicle screws in place, and he has a lot of low back pain and leg pain afterward. But you'll see the fusion is from L5 cephalward with the cages in place. But here's L5S1, markedly degenerated. We were still able, with very, very careful tolerance testing, to distract this area and give this man relief. Now, what do I mean by relief? Well, he's not well, but we can give him 40 to 50 percent relief, which he says makes his life much, much more uh, compatible with his wishes.